Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're checking out the Go Velo from Go Power Bike. This step through commuter is a pretty interesting bike for two reasons. The first is the price. Coming in at just 1500 bucks, the Go Velo falls well into the affordable price category for e-bikes. And for the second most exciting reason, well, we'll get to that a little bit later in the review. So for now, let's dive into the specs. First, let's talk about the motor. Let's talk power. The Go Velo's beating heart is a robust 750 watt motor. Now I was expecting to see a 350 watt or 500 watt motor here when I was told how much it retailed for, but Go Power really went the extra mile to get the higher spec motor. This bike reaches a top speed of 20 miles per hour, so it is a classic class two e-bike. Kind of a tongue twister, but that's what it is. Next, let's talk about the battery. No e-bike journey is complete without discussing the battery and the Go Velo doesn't disappoint. The 48 volt 10.4 amp hour lithium ion battery fuels your adventures, offering a blend of power and efficiency. Charging time is impressively quick, getting you back on the road sooner. While the estimated range is noteworthy, let's dive into a reasonable expectation distance by dividing the watt hours by 20. It's an indicator of real world performance, though it's not an exact science. So while the marketed top range is 35 to 38 miles, the real world distance is probably closer to about 25 miles miles with a good mix of pedaling and throttle use. Now 25 miles is still a great distance if you're looking to commute to and from work. So if you're looking to commute about 10 to 12 miles to work, then you obviously, you know, you got to come back from work, then this should be able to do it on one single charge. Next, let's talk about the frame. Crafted for both style and substance, the Go Velo boasts a 6061 aluminum frame that's sleek and sturdy. This e-bike's weight and load capacity make it versatile and accommodating, catering to a wide range of riders. The low standover height of 17 inches ensures easy mounting and dismounting, while the reach length here offers a comfortable and balanced riding position. One of the things I was struck with when I was riding this around is it is a fairly upright position, a little bit more forward than straight up and down, but still overall has a nice upright riding position. Next, let's talk about the suspension. When it comes to a smooth ride, suspension matters. The Go Velo suspension system is designed to tackle various terrains, though the tires and travel are more accommodating for the cement jungle. Now, that didn't stop me from taking an off-road in the real jungle, but that's later in the ride test. Spoilers. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The Go Velo has mechanical brakes and 160 millimeter rotors, and while we would love to see hydraulic brakes on e-bikes these days, they did work well and stopped us in a few different situations, so nothing to complain about, but I would love to see hydraulic brakes on the next version of this bike. The brakes do also have motor cutoff inhibitors, so there is an extra safety feature here and something that we see standard in a lot of e-bikes these days. Next, let's talk about the gears. Gearing up for efficiency, the GoVel's drivetrain system enhances your riding experience. The seven-speed Shimano Turing derailleur is a proven component from a proven brand, and it's cool to see name brand parts here. Everything in this department worked well, and we didn't see any ghost pedaling at higher speeds, which is another thing we'd expect to come across at this price point. It's not here, so that was a pleasant surprise. Next, let's talk about the extras. Beyond the essentials, the GoVelo comes with a host of additional features that make your ride all the more enjoyable. And three of those accessories are my second favorite thing about this bike. It's got everything you need for this to be considered a commuter e-bike. And at the price point, this is a very cool combo. Now those three things are a rear rack, fenders, and an integrated light, which basically means you can carry stuff, stay dry, and see the road at night. All good things, in my opinion. So who is this bike for? The Go Velo would make for a good cruise around the neighborhood ride, but it is also a very affordable commuter, making this thing a jack of all trades, if you will. It's budget friendly, decently specced, and all around a pretty solid value. Now don't get me wrong, internet comment people, there are some upgrades to be looked at, such as the grips, saddle, maybe adding an integrated rear light as well, but for the price point and what you get, still a pretty good value. Do you know what else we should add on right now? A ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test on the Go Velo from Go Power. As we talked about in the review up to this point, this is a step through commuter style bike. Now, this isn't something that's going to go incredibly fast, but it is going to be one of those bikes that's a little bit more efficient and, you know, and it has its use case as far as, you know, a commuter goes. We've got pretty much everything that we need for a commuter. We have got the full set of fenders, front and rear, integrated light up front. And then we've got a rack in the back. So that's pretty much the three main things we look for in, in a commuting bike. And as you guys know, you can pretty much commute on anything. As long as you're riding it from here to there, you know, it's a commuter. But with those specs, it sort of hits that commuter bike for us. So basically, we've talked about the specs and stuff. So we're just going to hop on and do some riding. So let's go ahead and do that now. One thing I am going to do real quick is lower the seat down a little bit. Now, this isn't going to be the perfect geometry for me. As you can tell, that's 
pretty low, so I'm about uh, 5'10", so where I had it, probably pretty solid. This is probably for somebody who's a little bit closer to 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, something like that. It is a pretty approachable bike. It's got a nice little step through here, so very easy to mount and dismount. Go ahead and check the, uh, see I'm gonna be riding about like this. That's probably pretty good, huh? Check the, check the camera. I like it, let's do it. So, to turn it on, we'll go ahead and turn it off real quick. Turn it on, we've got the power button right here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that, kaboom. And it's gonna tell us a couple things. I'm not sure if that's coming through on the GoPro or not. Looks like it's flickering a little bit, but I think you can kind of see most of the stuff here as long as I don't move it. That's weird, but, so we've got three different modes. We've got our speedometer here and then our battery life. So not a whole lot of information here. There's probably a couple more things that people might like to know about, but you know, this is a very easy to use simple platform. And the fact that the screen is integrated into the stem here means that it's, it's pretty sleek, right? So let's go ahead and we've got it in E, which I will be calling eco mode. Go ahead and hit the, the throttle here and we'll just start, uh, we'll start cruising. So now the throttle is gonna be controlled by what level of pedal assist we're in. With commuters specifically, we like to see that the throttle kind of goes top speed all the time. That way, you know, to walk you through the scenario, if you were going, you know, five, 10 miles per hour, something like that, you're just kind of cruising along and then a situation comes up and you've got your eyes on a swivel, you're looking around and you're like, oh, I need to punch through the zone for whatever reason, car, pedestrian, other bicyclists, whatever, you can do that with the throttle. Now, with this one, it is dictated, so as we go up to D mode, which we'll call drive mode here, um, it is gonna go a little bit faster, and then as we go up into S, which is sports, or maybe even sexy mode, you know, depending on what you wanna, what you're doing, I guess, on the bike, then it goes a little bit faster. And use the brakes, got a real life test here. Got a truck barreling down the road. He's probably going the speed limit, so I say barreling. Don't want to disparage the guy. He's going the, he's going the right speed. So we're going to go ahead and do a little turning. Get up on this path here. Now, as far as this path goes, this is a pretty solid spot for this bike to be. Nice and smooth. Plenty of room to maneuver. You know, we've got a really nice, comfortable setup here. Now, it is a little bit more of a forward ride. And... The main reason that is, is because we can't adjust the stem. You know, there's a lot of uh, those built-in displays. As far as, as far as I know, most of, the, most of the stems with built-in displays aren't also super adjustable, right? Now, if, if this was a bike and the display was somewhere else, it's pretty easy to upgrade that. You know, you could spend another 10, 12 bucks, whatever, to get a you know, Pro Max adjustable stem, something like that, that extends it out to sort of fit you a little bit better. But because it is integrated into the display, we are kind of tied to how the stem, how the, how the stem fits, right? We could do like a, an extender and things like that, but if you're gonna buy it the way it comes, it is a little bit more of a forward ride than maybe than it looks like. I guess that's one of the things I was surprised about was I'm like, oh, I am kind of leaning a little bit forward. It's not uncomfortable, nothing like that. It's just, it's a little bit more forward than you would think based on looking at the bike. So as far as ride feel, we've got the suspension up front doing what we want it to do. And so it is a pretty comfortable bike to ride on. I am kind of a fan of the saddle actually. Now I haven't been on you know this specific saddle before, but it's, it fits my seat bones well. And so for the most part, you really enjoy it. And uh, I think it, it adds to the ride. So go ahead and do a brake test. Go ahead about, uh, 30 kilometers per hour, go ahead and hit those brakes. We can skin them a little bit. Now, one of the things with mechanical brakes is, you know, we could probably tune that up a little bit and get a little bit more responsiveness. It still is gonna be quite a bit of hand power to, to stop that compared to a hydraulic brake or something like that where less pressure is required and it usually stops with a little bit more force on the back end if they're tuned correctly. And it also has cruise control, so you know, we're going about like this. That was, I guess, too short of a period. And use that bell here. So we're coming around the corner. Now the bell looks, 
you know, pretty cheap is when I saw it. I was like, oh, you know, these kind of threw on the bell. It's pretty loud. So, although this is a, you know, safety feature, it is, uh, you know, it's not an expensive safety feature. It does add, you know, they get some safety points there for having, having a bell in here. Yeah, that sounds pretty, sounds pretty decent. It sounds better than you'd expect is what I'm trying to get across here. Now, as far as responsiveness from the motor, it is pretty responsive. Like there's not a huge time delay between pedaling. Now the difference between cadence and torque, we talked about that in a couple of different videos, but essentially with pedal assist, there are you know two main types, which is cadence and torque. So torque is gonna measure the force that you're putting down on the pedal. Now that is a little bit more of an engaged ride. It's a little bit more active as far as telling, you know, what you want it to do. The motors tend to be a little bit more responsive. And then with cadence, what we find is that it is uh, magnets on the side, right? So it's just reading the magnets going around. So it's purely a revolutions slash speed of pedaling to give us different, uh, different assistance out of the motor. Through the dirt right here. Now this is the part where we do our impossible hill climb test. And we're gonna go ahead and probably shift it down. Nice easy shifts as well, which is always nice. You know, we get a lot of a lot of bikes and some of them need a little tune up and some of them don't. So it's always a bonus when uh, when they don't. All right, so we're going about uh, 13, 14 kilometers an hour here. And you go up this hill. So it was struggling a little bit, but the motor definitely made it. Go and hit those brakes on the downhill here. Stops us, very nice. Now, as far as upgrades or things that I would look for in the next model, hydraulic brakes are pretty high up on the list because I can't skid, you know? I'd like to just kick it out and skid around, but these mechanical brakes here, they stop well. Go ahead and do a throttle only, an impossible climb here. It is so close. So close there. Now this isn't a bike that's gonna be, you know, tackling a ton of hills or, or anything like that. It's really more designed for this type of environment. We're just kind of cruising along. Go ahead and shift up here. And we'll cruise, switch over to the throttle. Switch over to pedal assist. Now one of the things that I do like is that there's not a huge delay between pedal assist and throttle. I personally like to switch back and forth of those quite a lot. So having something that uh, doesn't have a huge delay there is a big bonus for me in my riding style. If you don't know your riding style yet because you're looking to get your first e-bike, well, you know, that's something you're gonna have to figure out as you do it. And experience is the best teacher as far as, you know, what your riding style is. But if you've already ridden an e-bike and you know what you're, you know, what you're looking for, then, you know, things like that can kind of help you narrow down your purchasing decision here. Now, as far as ghost pedaling goes, pretty much nothing. Our top speed is 32 kilometers per hour here, and this is a good pedal cadence for this speed. So I think they pretty much nailed it as far as the gearing goes, which as you guys know, if you guys seen uh, you know any of these videos, uh, it's a common question like, hey, is there ghost pedaling? When does ghost pedaling happen? And with a lot of those bikes that have seven speeds, which this is also one that has seven speeds, but with a lot of those, they tend to mess that up unfortunately they uh, put a bunch of tech into it and they forget that they're uh, producing a bike first and foremost but uh, go power bike seems to have that figured out which is which is nice so go over here now this is an environment where the bike is not I say not supposed to go but not designed for then pop up here do some, do something crazy. This one do something crazy with me right now. Let's do it. Maybe the heat, the heat might be driving me to craziness. It's like 106 degrees out here or something. So we're cruising down here. Ooh, okay. All right. You saw that. We got some air. Now there's a lot of spots here, especially in Houston, where we kind of have this loamy sand vibe, and what you what tends to happen is the tires kind of get squirrely around a little bit 
and doing a little bit of that but so far so good handling itself pretty good Let's see if I say that and then I just smash my face into the ground that's why we wear a helmet isn't it yeah so like this spot's you know pretty sandy a little bit squirrely here but that would be doing that on you know any bike I've fallen plenty of times on my mountain bike with you know actual oh it is it is loamier than usual in here it's the the the, the loam test all right so i mean she's handling it but i'm having to make some micro adjustments on the fly here but uh we got some air on it there's a lot of fun that's loamy it's loamy homie hey she's uh she's doing well but then we get to the spots where a little bit more a little bit more hard packed handles really well and the tires are not designed for for this type of environment either this is sort of an extreme example but if you're like hey i need something that can handle some of these environments whether you got you know a shortcut you like to take or what have you you know it's nice to know that the the bikes can do this even though this is not their designed their designed environment and as long as it's not too loamy, I mean, really it's handling itself pretty well here do my best not to uh, not to crash. All right, we get a little bit of a, a drop here. Nice, nice, nice. Handle deck section well. Yeah, honestly, fairly impressed with. With the performance and handling, even though, like I mentioned, this is not the this is not the environment this thing was designed for, but it's handling itself all right. Gonna do a little break in here at the end here. Oh, now it skids. Now it skids. Where were those skids earlier when I wanted to skid around, huh? Come on, Govello. What are you talking about? Put a little bit of effort, that gets you up the hill real nice. So motor-wise, not something that's gonna be just throttling up hills, but if you put in you know, just a little bit of work, having the assistance is nice and it's gonna make some of those some of those hills seem a little less steep for you. Now, this is the part of the review, right? Where we decide what we wanna do. Do we want to go the easy way home or do you wanna go the fun way home? And based on how I phrased that question, you guys already know what I'm gonna choose. So let's go the fun way home. A little mountain biking adventure on the city commuter, the Go Velo from Go Power Bikes. And get into some craziness here. And just in case I do smash my face a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> saying that as I'm getting into some loamy sections here. Probably gonna be tired of the word loamy by the, uh, the end of this video. But guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate you hanging out, watching the videos. It's, uh, you know, it's really the reason that I get to get bikes and ride them around and give my opinion on them is, you know, I've got an audience of people who like watching videos. So thank you. I, uh, I do enjoy what I do and I'm glad you're here for the ride. Woo! And with that guys, We'll catch you on the next one. Whoa!